Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to more Corpse Factory. Didn't save corpse party. Last time, um Last time Ah, one new request, that's correct. Uh yes, I stopped right when we were being psycho. Also, I just now noticed this pillow on her couch. Wait, let me move. Uh yeah. See that stitching? That's really weird. It almost looks like... It almost looks like she ripped it apart and stitched it back together. Haphazardly. I, I don't know if it's always been like that. Anyway, one new request detail. 331 local time. Victim's phone number. Loading image. Wait. 331 p.m.? This was submitted just a few minutes ago. What are the chances that I would check an incoming request so soon after receiving one? My heart begins to race as the attached photo downloads to my computer. <clears throat> I'm excited for the prospect of working on a new request for the rest of the evening. Who will be the poor sucker to succumb to corp girl's whims? Will another beautiful corpse be left in my wake? Uh-oh, it's me. I knew this was gonna happen. My heart skips a beat and my hands instantly turn cold. What the hell? A photo of myself appears on screen. It's the very same image used for my company ID tag. Somebody in her company is submitting these details. Somebody hates everybody. Shinya. I was kidding. I'm not smiling in the photo or in real life. Is this some kind of joke? Somebody has requested my death? Somebody has requested my death! <laughs> Somebody wants me dead? Uh-oh. Watanabe, the person who hates me more than I hate myself. Of course she's the one who uploaded my photo. Of course she wants Cor Corpse Girl to take care of me. She's been looking for somebody to test the website on. Her noise post from the start of the week confirms that. She has been getting increasingly obsessed with tormenting me lately. I'm willing to bet that I disliked her post, her latest post, and it finally triggered her to request my death. <laughs> I promise that sound that you heard that probably picked up on the mic was not, in fact, Corpse Girl breaking into my house, but was my washer. So we're all good. In a fit of laughter, I set my work to dismembering my photo. I'm going to make Corpse Girl look so- my corpse look so realistic that she'll think that she really succeeded in killing me. Are you okay? And then, when her guard is down... <laughs> no, you're not okay. That's okay, take your time. June 1st, Monday! Sign of Sato yet? I wonder if she got held up. Aoi? Hmm. It's not exactly professional to be late on your first day of work. I grind my teeth and hope that Shinya can't sense my anxiety. She'll be here. I don't believe the bitter words that crumble out of my mouth. I send another message to Aoi's seemingly abandoned phone. I start really expecting a, a reply. Actually, she's not the only one absent. Tomoe isn't here either. Oops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 what's going on? Oh my god, clock. Uh, he doesn't need to tell me that. I've been watching her desk like a hawk ever since I came in this morning. There's a small surprise waiting for her in the top drawer, courtesy of yours truly. I've been eagerly anticipating her arrival for an hour now. We had a late night last night, so I wonder if she woke up on time. 
I taste something foul in my mouth. I don't really need Shinya's recap of his night with Tomoe. Don't you have work to do? Ugh, of course I need to! His vocalized thoughts trail off as he wanders away. I return my focus to the keyboard in front of me. As I type, letters scrawl across my screen seemingly slower than usual. No Aoi. No Tomoe. The static drone of the office environment is just as loud as ever, but without those two here, something feels off. Aoi shouldn't be missing her first day of work. And say what you want about Tomoe, at the very least, she's punctual. For her to be this late is super unusual. Kurosawa. A word, if you please. Yes, mommy. A soft but sharp voice snaps me out of my thoughts. I look up to find a middle-aged woman standing over me, one hand beckoning me in an intimidating fashion. Kotomi Aida, an executive who oversees a lot of juniors on this floor. I deal with her a few times a week. She's a serious and critical person, but I've seen a warmer side of her when she chats with colleagues on her own level. Miss Ida, did you need something? Please, come with me. Ida. I reluctantly raise from my chair and follow her through the office. She leads me to one of the glass screen cubicles that line on the wall of the office. Special spaces reserved for meetings and temporary workstations. Take a seat. I follow her instructions sitting down one of the bright and colorful plastic chairs that fills the small enclosure. A new employee was supposed to start work today. Sato, an acquaintance of yours, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. I've been trying to get in contact with her. I see. You understand that it doesn't reflect well on Sato's character if she can't arrive on time for her first day of work, correct? Yeah, I know. Yes, I understand. Believe me, it is very out of the ordinary for her to do something like this. Oh, I'm sure. Fujikawa recommended Sato for the job based on your personal request. You need to be aware that since Fujikawa holds rank over you, he is the one who will be reprimanded for hiring an unsuitable employee. <laughs> now, I wouldn't go so far as to say that he will be punished. Rather, his recommendations will be denied for the foreseeable future. And any attempt he makes to climb the ladder, so to speak, will be vehemently refused by the other executives. I get the recommendation thing, but that part's kind of uh, a lot, don't you think? Isn't that a bit extreme? All of that because of one temp employee that didn't show up for work? That's the way these things go. I've seen it dozens of times. The reason I'm telling you this is because you should feel some sort of responsibility to apologize to Fujikawa. I had no idea. Honestly, I... Enough. This isn't an open discussion. Fuck you. Apologize to Fujikawa and see if he will find it in his heart to forgive you. Fair enough. And please advise him to seek employment elsewhere. I don't foresee his career with us flourishing anytime soon. Oh shit, I really fucked up his... Oh man. Oh no. That's all. Totomi abruptly exits the cubicle and leaves me alone, sitting in a stupid looking green plastic chair. Take some time to compose my thoughts before also walking out. I don't know what to say to Shinya. I don't even know if I should say anything. Surely Kotomi is being a bit extreme and ineffectively halting Shinya's career at Temujin. This is all because I recommended Aoi for the job. I feel like an idiot, but how was I supposed to know that Aoi would be proved to be unreliable? Still, it's far too extreme. Kotomi is out of line. Something else is at play here. I can feel it. Yeah, me too. That is very extreme. I get, I get that from now on they wouldn't trust him with employee recommendations, but he can't move up the ladder? That's a bit extreme. Maybe Kotomi wants Shinya gone for her own reasons, but I can't imagine why. He's a junior employee and not exactly the type to step on anyone's toes and make enemies. I return to my desk in a bit of a hump and slept in my swivel chair. My eyes fall on the empty can of coffee next to my computer. I begin to wish that I'd purchased more than one this morning. Glancing over at the top of my screen, I can see that Tomori has still hasn't arrived. Maybe I'll have to wait until tomorrow for her to find the gift I left for her. I'm sure she'll love it. I don't enjoy my walk home to the park this evening as much as I normally do. There's too many things weighing on my mind. Aoi, Tomoe, Shinya, and Kotomi. Why is it that I'm being increasingly finding myself drawn to office drama? I don't want to deal with any of it. 
I just want to pursue my own goals. Working at an office means is a means to an end. A way to keep a roof over my head, and I have the money to achieve corp Corpse Girl's ambitions. If I should quit, I would, but I can't. Not just yet. I wonder if I could monetize Corpse Girl's services. Users could pay a fee to request a death. Or I could just even accept donations. But I get the sinking feeling that asking for money will reduce the amount of requests I get. The number of requests coming in is already depressingly low. If I reduce it any further, I'd be in trouble. As I draw closer to my apartment building, my phone cries out for attention. What? <laughs> I bring it to my ear with a swift hand. Ali? Noriko, what's the deal? I've been trying to get in touch with you all day. Yeah, you stood me up. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I... I couldn't... I couldn't bring myself to come into the office. Yeah, well, I gathered that. Tell me why. You know, just the stuff I normally have to deal with. For real? What are we talking about here? Stalkers? Or your own battles? I... I left the apartment twice. I really did. But I had to go back inside each time because it didn't feel right. I had to check a few things and then check again and... In the end, I gave up and laid in bed. I must have fallen asleep. Because when I looked at the time, it was already late. I understand, because I have social anxiety, but we just fucked over, like, a third party. I sigh angrily and hope that Aoi doesn't hear me. Alright. It sounds like you had a rough day. I'm sorry, but the situation isn't great. I'm just going to be honest with you, okay? I don't think they'll be happy with you if you come in tomorrow. If I were you, I'd write a polite letter of resignation and just... Forget about the job. Shinya. Shinya's been kind of thrown under the bus because of this. Shinya? Well, why? I'm not too sure myself. Since he got you the job, I suppose he was somewhat responsible for you. But because you didn't come in, it sounds like his career's in real jeopardy. Oh, God. Oh, no. Take a breath. You didn't know something like this would happen. I didn't either. I feel like if your social anxiety is that bad that you... I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. I don't know. Because I understand what she's going through, but at the same time... Don't agree to it if you can't do it. Or, she could have called me. I could have helped her. Like, maybe for her first day, can, can I come with you? Can I, can I carpool with you? I don't know. Something, you know? Maybe if she had a friend, she would feel comfortable. One exec has it out for him or something because it's too much of an overreaction. I can't believe it. I never wanted to cost him his job. I know. You didn't mean for this to happen. Look, I'll try and smooth things out a little. I'll talk to Sheena tomorrow. You need to look after yourself right now, okay? Promise me you'll just take it easy tonight and relax. Mm, okay. Forget this ever happened. Noriko will look after everything. Thank you, Noriko. Okay. Get some rest. Talk to you soon, now. Bye-bye. End the call with a heavy heart. I don't actually have any idea what to do. When it comes to Aoi, I always feel obligated to just tell her everything that will help her feel better. If I could actually follow through with my words and genuinely make things better for her, then... Well, maybe we'd have a bit of a different relationship than we do now. But I probably missed my opportunity for that a long time ago. In senior high school, I was never really truly understanding of her, and it cost me too much. Things are different now, of course. I've seen what she goes through, and I'd like to think I understand her a lot more now. My feelings for her are true, and not muddied in some sympathy or pity. If I was this different- oh, sorry, if, I, if this was a different life, I hadn't made all those stupid mistakes, I'd be happy with her. But now, the best I can hope for is that she wants to remain friends with me, and that we will have to be enough to satisfy me. Yo. Oh. That voice. A trickle of icy sweat drips, I sweat drips down my spine. In the near distance, sitting on a bench close to the park's exit is an easily recognizable figure. Come here. Ooh, I like your things. Like your little jacket and your little hat and the bear and yeah. 
I freeze in my tracks. My body wants to keep walking to reach the familiarity of my my home. My brain is engaging its fight or flight mode. Torn between my options, I find myself completely stationary. Come on, I won't hurt you. Tomoe. There's no doubt in my mind she'd been waiting for me here all afternoon. She'd known my route home. It's obvious since I last encountered her here in Shinya in the same park. I can't believe- Oh, I can't help but tense up as she leaps off the bench and approaches me. You're in a weird shit, right? Like, occult stuff? Uh, maybe? Is that what you came here to ask me? Nah, just listen, okay? I wanted the opinion of someone freakier than me. She really knows how to flatter a girl. It's kind of dumb, you know, but... Have you heard of that corpse girl website thing? Who does she think she's talking to? More importantly, how should I respond? I've heard rumors. Yeah, right? I heard rumors too, so I checked it out. I thought the whole thing was really funny. Like, could it be for real? Anyway, maybe I kinda used it to request a death. Is that so? I want pretty much straight up admitted that she was the one who requested my death. After all, I know exactly how many requests come through the site. The last one I had to have been from her. Yeah, and, uh, well, you know how the site works, right? Hmm. Fill me in. All you do is put in a photo of a bitch and her phone number. Then she's supposed to drop dead. Simple as that. Thing is, no one knows how it works. Or if it works, actually. Right. Okay, so you requested somebody's death? And... what happened? Well... This is it. This is where she admits that she uploaded my photo. I caught her red-handed. You see... The dumb bitch went and died. I blinked a few times. I'm positive I didn't hear that right. What did you say? The chick whose photo I uploaded. She's deader than a doorknob. Who is Tomer referring to? My mind is racing frantically, scanning through the list of Corpse Girl's victims over the past few months. The only person who died recently are Akane Tsurumaki and Echi Hanada. Tomer's talking about a female, so that must rule out Echi. Then there's Rui Hatano, but she died such a long time ago. Last year, in fact. Surely Tomura wasn't the one who requested her death. It was way too long ago for her to be bringing it up now. That leads me to believe that there's only one person Tomura could be talking about is Akane Tsurumaki. Or has someone else died? Somebody I never found out about? Impossible. I've been so thorough in searching for the results of my work. The only victim that Tomura could be talking about is Akane. But, wait, no, that can't be right. Tomura requested my death. Somebody more uploaded my photo to Corpse website just recently. I took a deep breath, swallow hard, and open my mouth. Tomoe, what you're saying is really serious. Are you sure this person died? Yep, no doubt. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. If you're good with this occult junk, how do you think she died from a website? Do you reckon my request really killed her? Because I don't really want this shit on my conscience, you know? I... I don't know what to say. <laughs> Come on. I was only really joking around with the website. Didn't think for a second that it could really work. But now, this bitch is cold in the ground, and I can't sleep at night. Keeping Shinya close is the only thing making me calm lately. Tomoe seems to be showing a little more remorse, which I didn't think she had in her. If she thought the website was a joke, then fair enough. It's only natural that she'd want to play around with it. And again, I'm kind of offended that she figured the whole thing was fake. Corpse Girl has worked too damn hard to be considered a joke. But I want to get to the bottom of this. I need to find out whose death Tomo requested. And more importantly, the question of who requested her my own death still remains unanswered. Tomoe, what's the name of the person you requested to die? Her name? Oh, you might know her. It was that skank from our office, Akane Tsurumaki. Akane Tsurumaki? Sure enough, she's well and truly dead. Tomoe isn't wrong in believing that the website killed Akane. Tomoe once posted on Noise about wanting to try the website, and she was waiting on someone to try it on. If I recall correctly, the request for Akane's death came through Corpse Girl's website shortly after I read that post. Perhaps Tomoe made the request on the very same day. So then, Tomoe was the one responsible. I assumed the person who requested Akane's death was someone in our office, but I never figured out it would be a junior data entry temp like Tomoe how did Tomori even know Akane? I can't see their paths would have crossed in such a large office building. Yo, Psycho, you in there? 
snap out of my thoughts and meet Tomoe's dead-eyed gaze. Your professional opinion? Can a website really kill someone? I'm torn between giving two replies. I could state that I believe the website worked and therefore help increase Corpse Girl's credibility, or I could play it safe and make sure I'm not suspected of any involvement. Coward that I am, I decide to play it safe. I was going to as well. No, absolutely not. A website can't kill someone. <sighs> yeah, I figured. Guess it's just a coincidence that she died. You reckon I'm not guilty then? I, I didn't really want the bitch dead anyway. I was just mucking around. Yeah, you're not guilty. <sighs> oh, thank God. That's a real weight off my elbows, you know? Mm-hmm. I sure as shit won't mess around with sites like that again, though. I'm gonna play it real straight from now on. I gotta get my life together. I got Amanda to look after now. Yeah. Right. Well, good luck with that. I need to get home. All I want to do right now is get back and figure out who the hell uploaded a photo of me on a website. My mind is reeling, and I'm not in the right headspace to listen to Tomboy's drivel any longer. Hey, for what it's worth, which ain't much. You're welcome. Mm. I know we ain't always seen eye to eye. Well, nah. That's about it for now. For a fleeting moment, I imagined that she was about to apologize for assaulting me last week. That possibility disappeared from my mind as soon as she had it. Uh, it had appeared. See you tomorrow. Okay. She waves almost sheepishly and wanders back to the park in the direction I came from. Right, time to go home. I can't relax until I know who requested my death. If it wasn't Tomoe, then the situation can be a lot more serious than I originally thought. Okay, but you still left the pic- Did you leave a picture in her desk? Because when she finds that, she's gonna freak out. It wasn't because of my petty squabble with her that someone really wants me dead. Who? Uh, I can't sleep. Must be past 3 a.m. Countless hours have passed since I started trying to figure out who requested my death. I've run through every possibility. Candle. Wow. Can candle. I've run through every possible candidate and their potential reasons a thousand times. I've replayed every encounter I've ever had with everyone I have ever met and... I'm drawing a blank. I don't know who wants me dead. I'm not so vain to think that everybody likes me. Sure as hell a lot of people don't like me very much at all. But, does everyone not like me enough to want me dead? To nominate me for Corpse Girl to claim as their prey? I take a little solace in fact that my life isn't actually in danger. Corpse Girl's victims are only brought low in by my hand. So my convictions are strong enough, and I never refuse a request. Taking my own life is absolutely out of the question. This is the one and only request I will ever refuse. And it's not for the sake of my own life, but rather... For the sake of Corpse Girl's continued existence, I will not let her die and be buried with me. However, now that I've eaten a lot of knowledge that somebody genuinely wants me dead, I can't be cured of my upset stomach. No amount of mental reassurance will quell that sickness rising inside of me. The top candidates are, of course, the closest to me. I've crossed off Tomoe off the list. Her relief at knowing Akane Tsurumaki's death wasn't her fault convinced me that she wouldn't make the mistake of messing with the website twice. Add to the fact that she came to me for reassurance. Well, it's safe to say that she's not the person I'm looking for. So that leaves the person I deal with on a daily basis. Aoi Sato, my best friend since junior high, and the first person I ever fell for. He rejected me gracefully during the senior high, so gracefully that we remain friends to this day. Did she want me dead? It's doubtful. She wouldn't even report her stalker, a guy who she apparently related to, to the police. Uh, because she didn't want him arrested. Then there's Shinya Fujikawa, another acquaintance from school, and now my coworker. He has even gone so far as to call us friends now that we're connected on noise. I've never been romantically interested in him, but I was under the false impression that he had feelings for me. He's a wannabe detective, but he doesn't have the complete the, the, the competence sorry, to follow in his father's footsteps. He doesn't strike me as the type that wants somebody dead let alone to go through with requesting somebody's death. Still, quiet, guarded people like him can really surprise you. When you take those three out of the question, equation, Emmy, people I deal with, 
Bailey are very few. There are higher ups and execs at work, like Kotomi Ida, but our, dealing, our dealings are so short and simple that I'm sure I barely even register on their radar. If I extend my list of candidates to include people that I don't deal with regularly, but who are technically still part of my life, then the list gets a little longer and more interesting and harder to narrow down. Kenji and Momo Ogawa, the father and daughter living in my apartment building. They're sweet, kind, and considerate. Couldn't imagine they'd want to kill me unless I'm really using too much of their internet bandwidth and they just can't take it anymore. There's my older sister, of course. Yuriko Kurosawa. We haven't talked in over a year, at least. She's scum, but she's probably not the type to randomly elect her own sister for her death. Probably. She's on parole, so I have it hard to believe that she wouldn't do anything to jeopardize her freedom. And there's... Mother. Tsuna Kurosawa. She's simply not in a position to submit any details to Corpus Girl's website. My struggling brain can't think of anyone else currently in my life. I have a very small social circle, it's true. All the people that fill my noise newsfeed either are have already been named on this list, or they're from such a small, long ago part of my life that they wouldn't even remember that I exist anymore. And then, suddenly and without warning, a face pops into my mind with a startling clarity. The guy from the library. Bojiro, was it? Bojiro, with no surname. He was bizarre, eccentric. Didn't seem like the type of person that gets out much. Kinda like me, I suppose. His eyes were so clear and unnerving. They say that the eyes are the window to the soul, but I couldn't see anything of substance through his lenses. Out of everyone I've mentally listed, he seems like the person most capable of taking someone's life. That's a biased opinion, based on little to no knowledge of him. It's just an impression that he gives. However, I have to ask myself, would he want me dead? Me, a person he met one time at a library. In addition, the photo of me that was uploaded to my website was from Temunjin's corporate system. It's the very same picture that I wear on my ID tag. How would Kojiro have access to it? If he was going to upload a photo of me, he would have found my noise profile and used an image from one of my albums. There aren't too many photos of me on there, but there are enough to identify me. The guy is suspicious, but I don't think he's the one I'm looking for. Yet, I can't get his face out of my mind. On a whim, I snatch up the phone from beside me and unlock the screen. The bright light shines like a beacon in the darkness and nearly blinds me, but I squint and navigate to the noise app. Ojiro, oh, he told me his noise tag, didn't he? I can't remember it. It'll save me the hassle of having to look through hundreds of profiles with the same name just to find him. What was it? At Kojiro? No, too simple. At Koji something. I start to type different variations until an auto-predicted result pops up. At Koji Koji! That's the one. I, re -tap, I tap results and instantly arrive at his profile. The info is in, in his about me section is pretty vague, but judging by his display photo, I'm certain this is the right guy. At Koji Koji. Just your average guy, taking my days one at a time. Introvert. Anti-social, anti-establishment, anti-everything. LOL. I like peanut butter though. <laughs> okay, I like this guy. This? This is... This used to be my bio for like every social media ever until I became a witch. I scroll through his feed and say that he hasn't posted anything for quite some time. His most recent post is from a year ago, and it's just an updated version of his display picture, where he has this cropped out a woman's face and body so the focus on just him. I open up a direct message and start typing. Uh, no, no, Noriko. Okay. Hey, this is Kojiro from the library. It's Noriko. Kurosawa. This is past 3 a.m. I'm not expecting a reply until I instantly receive a message in response. Hi, late night? <laughs> he replied so quickly. I swallow and gather the nerve to ask him what's on my mind. Yes, I can't sleep. Have you heard of Corpse Girl's website? The screen states that he's currently typing a message, but then the notification simply disappears, and no message comes through. He ignoring me? Then, yes. But he does know about the website. The question is, was he? The 
question is, was he already familiar with it? Or did he just look it up after I mentioned it? What are your thoughts? Is it real? Yes, I love it. Big fan. See, me too. Have you used it? No. Well, no. Not yet. Don't hate anyone enough. It's hard to get a sense of his emotions through his replies. I can't tell if he's being sincere or not. Wait, have you used it? Tell me. Tell me details. Does it work? No, I haven't used it. But it's popular in my office? I don't know why I wrote it like that, or why I ended the message with a question mark. I shake my head and wait for a response. Okay, let me know if you use it. Might be work for me. Might be work for me? What does he mean by that? Work? Yes, I store cadavers. Dispose of later. What the fuck? I don't understand. Yeah, I- yeah, what the fuck does that mean? I store cadavers. Are you a mortician? Hospital morgue. Storage and disposal. He works at a morgue? I noticed a strange smell on his clothes when we met, and now it makes sense. I gag a little and suppress the urge to vomit. Why? You literally go to like... Okay. You literally photoshop real dead bodies. <laughs> and the mortician freaks you out? So if somebody dies, they get sent to you? Even for, like, suicides and murders? Yes, all sorts. First are crash victims, have to mix and match limbs. Have you ever received a victim of Corpse Girl's website? Impossible to know. Maybe? Who can say? Have a name? A name. Can he look up names of bodies he's received? Can you look up such a thing? Yes, cadavers are ID'd. Mostly. Know a victim? Should I ask? Will doing so put me under suspicion of being associated with Corpse Girl? Hello? Can look now. At work. Start nervously biting my fingernails. I know that I won't gain anything from finding out if he's dealt with any of the victims, but... Morbid curiosity tends to get the better of me. Sometimes I just have to know. Akane Tsurumaki. Okay, a second. No. Correct spelling? Got a M, Tsurumaki, and Akane, Tsurumi. That's not right. Close, though. Okay, more names? Ichi Hanada. One sec. Yes, crash victim. Bad. I remember him. He's still here, actually. Can't believe what I'm reading. Ichi Hanada ended up at a Kojiro's morgue, and he's still there? Really? How long ago do you store bodies? Depends. Up to two days for auto auto psy. Auto auto up do auto autopsy. <laughs> for him, no need. He just sits there, cold chamber, number thirty one BB. If family don't collect, then cremation. Is cremation what you mean by disposal? Yes, mostly. Why is he talking like that? Friend of yours? Not exactly. But he's Corpse Girl's victim? You said so. Well, I don't know. You said so. Interesting. I'll look at him again. Really, there's no need for that. It's okay. I won't tell. I'm horned. <laughs> I'm just kidding. How did you do it? <gasps> Uh oh. I swallow hard. What does he mean? Hello? How did I do what? How did you kill him? Oh shit. I've messed up. He knows. Kojiro has figured out who I am. In a panic, I slam my phone down. I can hear the constant vibration against the bed as Kojiro continues to message me. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. What do I do? Can I make up something to convince him that I'm not the one responsible for Edgy's death? Will he even buy it? By not responding to him straight away, I'll probably inadvertently prove my own guilt. But I pick up my phone and between my trembling thumbs and forefinger, I hold it delicately as though I had suddenly become some sort of evidence that I don't want covered in my fingerprints. In a way, that's completely true. I stare at the message from Kojiro. Hey. Hey. You there? Hello? I'd better reply. I have to say something. Maybe, just maybe, I can throw him off my trail. 
don't know what you're talking about. I didn't kill anyone. Not exactly a lie. Yeah, true. Corpse Girl killed him. No name entry on Corpse Girl's website. But you knew his name, and you knew he died. Ergo, you requested his death. Wait, this is good. This is far better than him believing that I'm Corpse Girl. Thinks I'm just some fan of the website that submitted a request. I have to run with this. I can't let him know the actual truth. Okay, you got me. I used the website to request his death. Ah. Uh, wow, mad. So the site is real. Amazing. This is exciting. Are you happy he's dead? I decided to take a leaf out of Tomoe's book and act more innocent than I really am. Not really. I just made the request on a whim to see what would happen. I didn't think it would really work. Wow, so you didn't hate the guy? Eichi? No, I never met him. Just found him on a photo- his photo on the internet. Incredible. Corpse Girl kills with just a photo. Doesn't even need a name. Wonder how many other Vicks I've got here. LOL. Have to go. Clocking off soon. Talk later. Ojiro's status immediately changes to offline. I breathe a sigh of relief. I thought he... I think he bought the lie. Surely I'm in the clear. But... This whole conversation was an exercise in stupidity. I nearly shot myself in the foot because of my own insatiable curiosity. I shouldn't have contacted Kojiro at all. The only positive thing to come out of this is learning that Kojiro works at a hospital morgue. I could potentially take advantage of this, but my sleep-deprived brain can't- <laughs> Sorry. Quite work out how. Well, I can dwell on that later. For now, I really need sleep. Really need to get your crap together, girl. Girlfriend. <laughs>